welcome back to the channel today we are going to talk about the fike sh pro some call it the ship pro so we are going to talk about it the overview of it how the system works and i'm going to take you through the wiring how it's being wired and this when i was just working on it i tried as much as possible to just put labels so as for it to be easy in identification okay so now let's get straight to the input devices um, the system comprises of two spaces okay now we have the input devices and the output devices okay and the output devices so the input devices are mainly terminated with 1.5 mm squared cable okay and the output is 2.5 okay that is the standard okay because whenever there is an output there is more of voltage going through that system so mainly we need a higher uh, bigger cable okay so let's me let me take you through the board and everything and that is the display this is the diagnostic as it being written on that is where you are going to see whatever that is happening on the panel and now here we have the ac normal the alarm the pre-discharge release supervisory output disabled trouble panel silence about ground fault okay and i would like to demonstrate everything on to you uh, when there is time okay so now let's go straight to here now the first termination is the zone 1 that is the cable in zone 1 we have zone 2 we have MRS we have upwards we have LPS okay and the zone 1 is being connected to the zone detectors okay the MRS is the manual release station the upward switch is a system that is used to upward the system uh, upward the operation in case it's in pre-discharge mode okay when the system is counting down and the lps is the low pressure switch which is used to determine whenever there is a low pressure in the cylinder it's going to send signal here and i'm going to show you the device that is being controlled on the cylinder side okay now let's come here on this side you can see auxiliary output that is uh, it's a power limited 24 volts that you can just use uh, in case you need an auxiliary power supply and the audibles that we have we have the bell the horn strobe we have the strobe light itself and we have the IRM the IRM is called the impulse release module okay the impulse mo release module is connected to the IBU okay the impulse valve operator so that is what is what is going to be used to extinguish the fire and looking straight here we have something here we call the dip switch the dip switch is what we use to just enable and disable which type of system that we will need to use okay so with time i'm going to explain vividly to you how it's going to work and when you come to this side these are the relays for the trouble. This is the fault relay or the trouble relay. We also have on the second part a supervisory and we have on the alarm relay. And when you come, this is an external relay that can be fixed on um, P9. Yes. It can be fixed on this side. So when you look on straight to the board, you can also fix another one here. And all has its function wherever that you fix so for here when you fix you're going to have and by the by what we need we are going to get here alarm that is the first stage alarm and the second relay is going to give you the second stage alarm the third relay is going to give you the release alarm and the other one is going to give you a fault okay so these are the terminals that can just be used to supervise the system in case nobody is here to supervise it okay so then we come straight to the transformer 
looking at the transformer the transformer is 240 volts being converted to 24 volts so that is what we need so supply that is coming from here the ac supply is 220 or 240 volts which is being stepped down to 24 volts then it's being supplied to this part and the next cable that is attached to it is the battery okay and the battery that we need here that is it we need a 12 volt 7 ah battery okay the fuse that we have here is only 10 amps and as per the description we need 10 amps fuse so anything above 10 amps is going to uh, break the fuse so as not to destroy the board so it's very important to just put the specified fuse there and the specified battery also as well because when you try to put 12 volts 12 ah it means you're just increasing the amps and thereby it can just be tripping the system so you just need to take care of that one also as well and looking at here um, what else do we need to talk about okay so we come straight that is the system in full display then this is the manual release that we were talking about from fike the system is all in fike okay so now let's come straight to this part and i'm going to explain certain things here a little for you to understand now when you look at the diagnostic led codes we have with without period and with period okay so i'm gonna explain the troubles i will just make one trouble then i will just show you i will just try as much as possible to remove the battery okay so whenever there is a trouble signal what is going to show and what is the meaning of it how to just troubleshoot the system okay now i remove the battery i'm seeing e and i see the blink of trouble i'm going to make it silent okay okay i silenced it so if i silence it's showing panel silence trouble signal and the e that is describing what is happening there so what is e in case you want to troubleshoot then you come then you see a you come down straight here then you look for e what is the e saying is battery failure okay so exactly it's a battery failure because i've removed the battery okay and when i connect it it will automatically vanish voila this is very 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 nice okay the same applies to other system other sites in case there is a trouble in the zone one you're gonna get one with no dots zone two also the same thing too and zone three the mrs you're gonna get three the abots you're going to get four the lps you're going to get five okay and when you come here when there's trouble here you are going to get the six for the bell seven for the horn stroke eight for the strobe lights and nine for the irm okay and in case you have solenoid connected to this side then you're going to get 11 because the display is very small to just contain 10 so when you look down here you will see that it's 6 9 and 11 not 6 to 10 it's 6 to 9 and 11 okay so that is it so but whenever you see it with a cone with the with that dot that is there there is this dot whenever you see it's being activated let's say i will just say okay when you see it with that dot then it means it's activated okay and with another side the six to nine when you see it six to nine to eleven when you see it with dots then it means it has been shot okay and it means something is happening that is not supposed to happen to the system like that so it's very important to just bear in mind how the system works now this has been made so simple in troubleshooting in everything and the fight is very 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 good whenever it comes to fire suppression system because we have various options that you can just use okay and this is being used 
to just control to supervise um, um, I forgot to just tell you this now you see this there is an alarm relay here but because I have one first stage alarm and this is also the first stage alarm I tried to just use that as my damper okay to shut down my damper there on the top to shut down and also it can be used also to just control your AC and even for the case of not having this auxiliary relay this not having this relay that is the CRM4 uh, control relay model number 4 this is the specification this control relay model 4 in case you don't have then you want to use this for multiple the alarm signal for multiple you can just introduce a relay 24 volt of which you can just make a looping from the external um, the power supply the auxiliary output and connect it to the relay um, signal for the alarm then you can just get multiple space for either normally okay. and this is the cylinder and this cylinder is spike and what is the gas content in it is hfc 227 ea extinguishing system okay and the gross weight is 227 the gas weight is 127 kg so you can see it's a huge cylinder okay now that is the pressure gauge and this is the lli this is used to just determine the amount of gas inside and with them i'm going to show you how it's being operated okay this is the ivo that i was talking about this is the impulse valve operator and when you look up here this is the low pressure switch that i was talking about this is the lds which is also connected down there okay straight to the panel and it's being supervised with a, an end of line okay and that is the discharge pressure switch when you look at the discharge pressure switch and the LPS, the low pressure switch, uh, it looks a little bit the same, but it's not the same. When when you get to remove it, you see that the sizes are different. Okay, so specifically, even if you don't know, when you fix the, when you interchange, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna fit. So you would always know where to put what. Okay, so that is it, and that is the cylinder, and this is where. You are going to fix the LP, um, the IVO, in case you would want to energize it, or you would want to just make it in active condition. Okay, and that is the pipeline going straight up into the protected room. So it's very important. 